Welcome to another episode of Gamerheads. My name is Roger, aka Rogue Leader76. And in this episode, I have a friend of ours from Four Horses. We have Mick, Mick Waits. Welcome back, Mick. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I'd, oh, I thought the... I'd from Carrington there. <laughs> I was going to say, did, we, did I accidentally get Carrington on the line? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, welcome back. Glad Thank to have you. you back on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me back. It's always good to be here. My favorite podcast. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, did you say that to the real dudes when you are on their show, too? Your, your favorite podcast is theirs? <laughs> uh, I haven't yet. I haven't yet, but I might do. Um, <laughs> no, no, you're, you're definitely my favourite because you, you bought Digger Dan independently and then uh, got me into podcasts and I didn't really know of any <laughs> podcast before then. So Wow, crazy. And you know that we actually have a pretty big following in uh, in Great Britain. Did you know that? Uh, no, I, don't, I wasn't sure what your demographic, what your breakdown was, but um, yeah, it makes sense. We understand the language, so <laughs> mostly. <laughs> Um, so welcome back. Um, for those that may be new to the podcast and haven't heard the episode where you are on, uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself? Uh, okay, so I'm Mick Waits. I'm the director, owner, programmer, and only person involved in uh, Four Horses, which is a tiny development studio that doesn't even technically have an office. We, we make games for consoles. Um, primarily Nintendo, but I might have a bit more information later on about Ooh. other things. Um, yeah, and we, 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 I keep saying we, I started off by um, publishing the game Digger Dan DX onto 3DS eShop and moved on to porting someone else's game, which is called Kid Trip, from iPhone onto uh, the 3DS eShop and now the Switch eShop too. Nice. Yeah, so uh, we met, actually it's kind of funny how we met, um, I picked up Digger Dan and was yeah. playing that, and then I was on the Nintendo Life uh, forums, and uh, I think that we just started chatting through that, uh, and also on, um, the the 3DS had that, uh, uh, what was that? Beavers? Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, so, it's so long since that's gone I now, know. we've forgotten what it was called. I know, me too. I know, and I really miss that, because that was really a cool way for yeah. you to connect with uh, players of your games, too. Yeah, if I remember rightly, Kid Trip managed to release just a month or two before that died, so it was nice to get that connection and feedback from the uh, players yeah. before it went. It's, it's something I really liked and do miss. Yeah. Um, but life moves on. Yeah. I hope they bring something like that to the Switch. I mean, that was a really cool. Uh, it was a really cool platform. I thought. Yeah, it was. It was. I've got a horrible feeling they won't. Um, yeah. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. We don't know what their online plans are yet, really, do we? Yeah. No. No. Uh, I guess they're coming up with uh, some plans in May. That's what. We, that's what I saw today. So. Yes. Yeah, I know. It's just that. Um, yeah. So si since we last spoke, uh, you released Kid Trip on the Switch. Uh, so when we talked, yeah. it was on the 3DS. Uh, so I guess, how has the response been, uh, and how does that compare to the 3DS? Well, I, I'll start off saying that the 3DS version of Kid Trip, um, in the, in comparison to the to Digger Dan, uh, the, the sales of it were relatively poor. They were maybe about a third or a quarter of what Digger Dan sales were in the opening days. So that was that was a little bit disappointing, I've got to say. Yeah. Um, but from from what other publishers have said, other developers, they're, they're seeing similar things with the 3DS that it seems to be tailing off now. It would have been nice to have got the game out before the Switch launched. I think the Switch has impacted that to a degree, but I do think that uh, I do think the 3DS had already started its decline. I've got to be honest, I stopped carrying my own around with me, which I used to used to carry almost 24-7. Yeah. Um, so, the, yeah, that's a shame. And I, I know Nintendo said, the, the new president said that they're planning to support 3DS. They've got games well into 2019. 
and it, that's sort of nice of them, but I think they also need to look at the realities that the players aren't really supporting it anymore. Um, just yesterday, we were out at a restaurant for my wife's birthday, and I saw the family there. The daughter looked maybe about seven, eight years old, and she had a Switch. Traditionally, you'd see kids that age out with a 2DS, maybe a 3DS. So... So yeah, Nintendo haven't moved on, but I think I think the players have, unfortunately. Yeah. So the the Switch version um, sold pr- on on the first couple of days sold pretty much one to one with the 3DS version of Digger Dan, the same numbers, but actually then kept performing pretty well, and oh. it's Digger Dan as it happened hit a hit quite a big milestone. It hit a hundred weeks on the eShop. Wow. And <laughs> and also a, a, a nice round number for units sold as well. I'm not sure if I can actually discuss units sold. I don't know if that's under NDA with Nintendo. Sure. I, I seem to think it is. Yeah. Um, uh, both in the same week, which was which was quite nice. Now, Kid Trip on Switch is is at ninety percent of those sales after wow. four months. Wow. So, so yeah, it looks like it's going to surpass. Digger down on 3DS does wow. uh, Kid Trip on Switch, which is good. Yeah, which is good. Yeah, I'd like it to be doing about ten times as many. That'd be great. Because <laughs> I could quit my day job and do this full time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's good. We're happy with it, and because we're happy with it, we're gonna keep doing more games. Yeah, is... and we'll we'll talk more about that too. I know that you have another game coming out soon. Um, yeah, one thing that I did notice uh, was a lot of people have been um, tweeting about uh, Kid Trip on the Switch. And that seems to seems to have a lot more, I guess, um, I don't want to say press, but more like people talking about the game on the Switch versus the 3DS. Did you, do you feel that way as well? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think I'd like to think a part of that is that I'm starting to use Twitter a bit more and more, and as I'm getting more followers, I'm, I'm getting quite a bigger reach, which is quite good. One or two of my tweets have sort of reached about 60,000 people, which I was quite delighted with. Um, but I also think, in a in a way, Kid Trip's more of a game... That I'd, if, if you're talking specifically the Switch version um, over the 3DS, I'm not sure why that would be specifically but with the with at least the image sharing and now the video sharing that we enabled in the latest patch oh we Ooh. by the way the the video sharing we would have loved that to have been there from day one but we'd actually submitted the built to nintendo about three days before that even was announced so we didn't sure. we didn't know that it was even ever going to be a possibility if i'd have known i would have held off um but yeah, because it's a perfect game, the levels last about 30 seconds, so the 30-second video clips are absolutely perfect. Yeah. Uh, and it's the sort of game where people do seem to like finishing a level, they feel so relieved that they've finally done it, and then they post up a clip and sort of go on about how difficult it was. Um, so I'm actually going to do the same thing today. Cool. I ca- captured a little bit of footage in our next game that... Uh, Ooh was very difficult to achieve so <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna post about it just sort of a little bit of twitter noise hopefully promote nice. the next game nice but yeah the the public do seem to like it they do seem to like playing it and talking about it which is good uh and then there's the ones who don't like it because they don't like auto runners <laughs> yeah. but we we ignore them <laughs> <laughs> um so with the with the release on the 3ds and then the release on the switch um what challenges did you see, or did you see any challenges uh, releasing on a Switch versus a 3DS? Or was uh, it easier? The, the, the biggest challenge was me. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> to, to a degree, I'd sort of felt like I'd, I'd overdosed quite a bit on Kid Trip by the time the Switch version came around. I, um, I actually got the game up and running on the Switch in about a week. It was incredibly easy to get it on there. And then I got distracted. I was offered a reasonable sum of money to do a side project. Oh. Uh, so I took that on. And as a result, I sort of delayed the Switch's launch. I wish I hadn't in some ways. Um, I'm, I'm glad I did the other work. It was it was worthwhile financially and I needed the money. Uh, but but I, I wish I hadn't delayed Kid Trip's launch because that eShop just keeps getting fuller and fuller every day. Yeah. So... It's difficult for people to find the games, but no, there were there were no technical challenges. The actual process of getting the game out onto the eShop is considerably easier than it is for 3DS. Um, 
one little announcement that I've got is there's a demo coming on both 3DS and Switch. Ooh. And just submitting the demo through the 3DS process just reminded me again how painful that is. Oh, um, really? it, it's, it can be such a difficult process. It's just all the little bits of paperwork and things that you can get wrong. It's just all done online with the Switch. Um, in fact, it's so easy that when I did submit Kid Trip the first time around, I managed to uh, lose my copy of the build that I submitted because <laughs> it, it, the process of building the game to run it just puts it in a temporary folder. Now with the 3DS, you sort of copy it from there and you bundle it up in a zip file and whatever and send it off to Nintendo. With with the Switch, you just upload it through a website and, and I uploaded it direct from that temporary folder and then it went and I totally <laughs> forgot to and I need that. I needed a copy of that for the patch. <laughs> so my own inexperience sort of left me almost unable to put out the version 1.2 patch but fortunately nintendo took pity on me and helped me out with that oh that's nice that's good <laughs> yeah so yeah the, the, no challenges to getting things out on switch but i think that's evident of the fact that there's so many games out yeah. on it now yeah. it's a year old and it's got what 600 eShop games yeah well, it's and, crazy. and one thing that I, you know, I've talked about on on our podcast previously is that I'm surprised at how the eShop is structured for the Switch because I feel like the eShop on the 3DS they did a really good job with that. Um, and there's yeah, it, it's so easy to find indie games, and, and the Switch is not. They've got a lot more categories on the 3DS, but it's painfully slow to navigate. Yeah, um, that's true. I, there's there's a lot of people complain about the Switch UI saying it's too basic, but I actually like it. I like it being very basic. Hmm. Um, the it, it means it's fast. It starts up fast, um, and just things like switching users when you when you want to keep the same game but switch to a different user. It's all so much easier to do than it is, for example, on the PS4, which I can never remember how to do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And I, I like it. I'd rather not have a cluttered UI. I'd rather have what I mean. The the Wii U took so long to start up, mm, yeah. um, and then there was a funny login process as well, which I think you could get to remember your password. But the, the switch is just so easy. It turns on. Here's your games. You click one. Who's playing? You click who's playing, and you're in. Yeah. I, I like that. And I, I sort of I hope that if they do improve the eShop, which they're saying they're going to, they're going to make it easy to for, to find game, which which is great. Now, if they can make my game specifically more visible, put it right on the front page, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> yeah. um, but whatever they do, I just hope that they don't compromise the speed of it. Because that's something I like about the Switch, it is its simplicity. It is, there's no fuss. There's no messing about. Just You just get on and you play your games, which is why you bought the machine. Huh. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree with the fact that it's super fast and, and that it's super easy to use. I just I would like to see a little bit more of the you know categories I guess but yeah definitely definitely that would certainly help certainly yeah um so currently now you're working on miles and kilo uh, is that correct that is correct yes uh, I was just working on it today I finished the Ooh. game one hundred well I say hundred percent I finished the main game mode today getting the best ranks on every level for the first time. I've never done that before on any nice. platform. So that's part <laughs> nice. of the testing process, which gives you a bit of a clue as to where it is in terms of development. Um, we're basically ready to submit to Nintendo, Ooh. which is, uh, yeah, uh, it's Switch only. There's no 3DS version of this one. Okay. Um, it's it's been developed originally in Unity, but then ported over to Monogame by Mike Burns for the steam version because it was just more convenient for him to do that yeah and that he got that up and running on the switch in about two days wow which was good um and since then it's mostly been implementing switch hardware features which are the bits i've been doing so dealing with the save game and control of vibration and control of disconnection screen stuff like that uh whereas he's been adding new features like a tutorial which looks suspiciously like the tutorial from kid trip <laughs> uh, and oh, i've been doing localization as well which has been fun because we've spotted russian for the first time Ooh. um so that required whole new glyphs adding to the font um but yeah, it's it, we're in sort of final testing phase, uh, just finishing off adding vibration to various different in-game events. 
a um, couple of bugs to fix and we're waiting for our icon to come back because we've uh, subcontracted that out to a to a non-pixel art artist. Wow. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's been good. It's, it's been a fairly short development process, but the thing I like most about it is I've not done very much myself, which is great. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, so... I've, I've, I've put quite a few hours in, to be fair. Um, but yeah, it's certainly a lot less effort than, than uh, Kid Trip was. Well, I was going to say, because Kid Trip... Like you did that all yourself, right? Did did you have Michael Burns help you with uh, with with Miles and Kilo? Uh, Michael Burns has done most of Miles and Kilo. Okay. Um, whereas Kid Trip, I took his original code, which was in a different language, and just converted it line by line and made it run on 3ds and uh, Switch. He, um, I think, he sort of assisted in terms of feedback and and helping me answer questions. Uh, about anything I didn't understand about the code, but uh, I don't think he directly contributed to the code base. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I knew that when we talked last time, you said that, um, you know, you you talked to Michael about like this is how you can you know take take your games important to the Switch. So, uh, so it sounds yeah. like yeah, you did a little bit more of of collaborative work on this one than than the previous one. Oh, definitely yes. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and yeah. so so you're saying that. Uh, relatively soon we should see this on a Switch? <laughs> well, I, I, I'd like to say it could possibly be as fast as four weeks, roughly, Whoa. if we were to submit on Monday, but I'm planning for that not to be the case. I'm okay. thinking we'll probably give it another week of final testing. I found a couple of bugs today that uh, I'd, uh, and I've got a couple of thoughts for places where it could just add a little bit more polish, so I'm probably going to add another week onto the submission, but I don't. We rushed kid trip out a little bit I, I, we, I rushed kid trip out a little bit once I'd uh, got approval from Nintendo I wanted it on the eShop as fast as possible sure. and that didn't get a lot, give a lot of time for getting review codes to uh, to the press so I think we were handing out the review codes the day before it actually launched which um, is, isn't is ideal so I would like to sort of build in a bit more of a buffer this time. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, we do obviously want it on there as fast as possible. But yeah, it's, it should be soon. It so, should be soon. Um, it, that's that's actually a good segue question here. Um, so how are you? How is your promotion of of this game going to be different than Kid Trip? What what lessons have you learned from Kid Trip versus uh, your promotion of Miles and, and Kilo? Um, I. <laughs> I would say that what I've learned is that I'm no good at doing promotion. Uh, <laughs> we we have actually got someone on board doing the promotion work for us. Oh, really? Who, uh, it, it's worked out very nicely for us. It's someone who's experienced in the industry but has uh, moved to another country, so she's looking to set herself up uh, as an independent publicist. And she's, she's willing to work pro bono, which is wow. absolutely great because that's just about the limit of my budget um <laughs> so yeah i'm i'm hoping that's going to make a nice big difference i mean obviously if there's a nice big visible difference and clearly we do really well out of this i would, I would definitely like to pay it because i don't i don't think it'd be fair not to um and then obviously put future work her way as well so the difference is going to be this time is uh, i've got someone who knows what they're doing helping me <laughs> In fact, right after this uh, interview, I need to, I've got a lot of questions she wants answered, so okay. <laughs> I've got some email writing to do. But um, yeah, it's uh, it hopefully should be better. Hopefully, should get a bit of a bigger reach. Nice. And and do you um do you reach out to things like the press, like Nintendo Life? Um, I think there's like Euro Nintendo or something like that too. It, there's probably other different sites. Do you reach out to these different sites and and yeah, give them definitely. review codes? Okay. Definitely, there's there's quite a few sites who uh, who don't respond. Uh, there's one really? that any email you send gets hit by an automatic. Well, it's nice that you want your game publicised on our site, but we'd quite like some money. <laughs> what? Uh, really? Um, I, oh yeah, I'm not going to name them. Uh, <laughs> there's uh, unfortunately there's quite a few of the big sites will quite happily take press codes and then not review the game, wow. which is um, yeah. Ah, that's one of the the one that uh, asked for money as well. They did that. Someone someone emailed me from there, and I thought, oh, oh, we're actually going to get on this time, even uh, even without 
paying and then no reviews ever appeared so wow. they've just taken the code for their own personal catalogue I think Wow. which is uh, yeah it's a bit cheap but not Nintendo Life Nintendo Life are my favourites they yeah. um, without without their I mean Kid Trip wouldn't have made it to well, probably wouldn't have made it to Nintendo platforms because uh, myself and Mike Burns met through Nintendo Life so wow that's cool I guess I didn't realize <laughs> I didn't know. I don't know all the ins and outs of how that review process goes. Um, that maybe I'll do that as a future episode. That sounds kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th- I mean, there's there's the other side as well where you'll get people who uh, claim to be certain reviewers. They'll pick out reasonably well known YouTubers who've got a, a reasonable number of followers, and they get an email from them, and it's supposedly that person at gmail dot com and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I'm, I'm this person. Send me a review code. It's like <laughs> it's four dollars. Just spend the money. You yeah, right. Get. Right. Exactly. That's that's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> well, apparently, apparently, some people just try and black these free keys and then sell them on 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 resale sites. Wow. It's like, well, you're not really going to get a lot for a game for a, for a key for a four dollar game. Really, I wouldn't have thought. Because surely the whole purpose of that is you've got to offer them a saving. So wow. That's crazy, huh? Yeah, yeah. Um, so in this last episode, which we haven't produced yet, but uh, but I will come out next week. Uh, Matt and I discussed some flaws in modern gaming. Um, what are some design flaws that you've seen in in gaming, and and what are some things that you think about when you're when you're designing games and working on games like this? Well. One thing that I would sort of consider as a design flaw, although I'm sure there's plenty of people who disagree with me, is uh, procedurally generated games. Oh, I'm not really? sure if I've mentioned this to you in the past. Yeah, they seem like a really good idea. And at one point I was looking at working on one. I'd got some ideas for what I wanted to do for a procedurally generated game. Um, it was sort of going to be like a, an RPG. There's a game on um, on iPhone called... 8-bit dungeon or is it 1-bit dungeon um, yeah I think it's 8-bit I think it's 8-bit dungeon yeah uh, where, you, where you sort of move one step at a time then the enemies move a step yep. I like the idea of doing that in a, in a again they've got quite small mazes um, but actually with 100 characters at once each in their own different procedurally generated maze so every time you move, choose a direction all your characters move in that direction so some of them will take damage and some won't and as you as you progress, certain ones will die off, and you'll get fewer of these screens, and you've just got to get at least one of them to the end. And I, I quite liked the idea of that as a mechanism. But then I went off the idea because I totally went off procedurally generated games when I realised that I don't actually enjoy playing them myself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because I like a game that's got a defined start, middle, and end. I like to uh, I like to know where I'm going with the game. I don't want myself maybe i'm just too lazy i don't want myself to have to make the game make a game out of the game if that makes sense i want yeah. the game to be presented for me the challenge is to present it presenting for me and i want i want to know that once i've beaten it i've i've beaten it not if i go back and play again it'll be different and give me a different challenge hmm. so so yeah i started to go off those um but another another design flaw, and this one again might not be very popular. Um, Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, controversial. Um, <laughs> the DLC. Oh. There's absolutely no point to it. Yeah. We we when I got the game, I bought the DLC before I'd even put the card in the in the Switch. I think just knowing that it was coming. Um, and I was a bit, I was a bit frustrated because you, you got that Switch T-shirt. I had to look on the internet as to where to find the thing. And by the time <laughs> I reached it, I'd already got better armor. And it's like, well, why am I going to wear this? Yeah. Why is my character going to wear this Switch T-shirt? He's no use to him in game whatsoever. But then the rest of the DLC, when that unlocked, uh, when that finally dropped, I mean, I, I, I spent an, uh, quite a large amount of time on that game. That's did most people over a uh, hundred hours. But I'd, I'd beaten Ganon by then, and I, I really took my time. I got all the shrines first. I did. I got as much out of the game as I wanted to, essentially. And then I beat Ganon, and then DLC dropped, and I, I loaded it up and looked at the hero's path to see where I'd been, and thought, okay, that's interesting. And then 
I thought, <laughs> but I can't be bothered going to collect this armor. I'd started, I'd, the, all the armor that I'd collected, I'd started trying to level it up. And I got to some that required about 50 dragon horns. And I thought, no, no, that's not for me anymore. <laughs> this is this is getting a bit tedious now. Yeah. Um, and it's like, well, this DLC contains more armor. And it's like, well, but I've, I've won the game. Why do I need more armor? Right. There was there was nothing left in the game really for me to do other than just collecting stuff. Yeah. And for me, that's a massive flaw. Yeah. And I personally, I don't think Zelda should have got Game of the Year. I think it should have gone Ooh. to Mario and uh, Mario Odyssey. Wow. Uh, that was for me. Zelda was a great game. It was a fantastic showpiece, but playing it wasn't always fun. There were the parts where you were sort of just grinding, really. Whereas Mario, you never felt like a grind, though. You're always playing levels, you're always moving to new areas, you're always presented with new challenges, new content, where Zelda was just a big area for playing. Um, so yeah, controversial, but... Interesting. There you go. No, I think I think you make some really good points. Um, uh, what We did talk about DLC versus, you know, having, like, a whole brand new... Uh, you know, story or new whole new worlds that you can explore in. And I do think that that is a design flaw. I mean, I think if you're going to add, you know, new content, it should be something that, and you're going to charge for it, it should be something that a player can explore a whole new story versus just, you know, additional stuff that, well, I already beat this game. What's the point of this? Like you said, it, yeah. that, that doesn't make much sense to me either. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I said Game of the Year should have been Mario. Actually, Game of the Year should have been Celeste. Oh, Celeste is great. <laughs> yeah. I do love Celeste. <laughs> How far have you got? I have to ask. Uh, I am in Chapter 2, I think, right now. Right. Um, yeah. So I'm finding, like, the first couple bits, I was like, oh, this is pretty easy. Now I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, I, I would thoroughly recommend leaving those strawberries behind <laughs> yeah i started skipping them i'm like okay uh, i'm gonna not she's not that them. hungry yeah exactly <laughs> do you do you so, think oh go ahead sorry i was gonna say is is my favorite game of possibly all time i just love everything about it and i'm i'm the sort of person unfortunately who likes to punish myself so i've, <laughs> I've finished the main game getting all the strawberries oh and i've gosh. done the the B sides of the first three chapters getting all the strawberries as well, and there there are some bits that just made me cry. They were so hard, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I absolutely love it. It's just flawlessly designed. Uh, you you care about the characters in it, and it's I don't know. It's just so nice. I just had such a big smile on my face throughout all that game, and it delayed getting the Kid Trip one point two patch out because I was playing that too much. <laughs> Well, and, and do you think that part of your reason, your, your first um, design flaw with the um, procedurally generated uh, worlds, do you think that you're more of a gamer that likes story and like to be tied into the character? Yes and no. Um, I, I, if if your story is sort of like Octopath Traveler, sorry, another game that people are going to absolutely love, but it's just not for me. I, pl I tried to play the demo. I just desperately wanted to see what the game was like, and I got bored reading. Um, uh, a lot of reading. Yeah, and I, I'm not against reading, but when you get a demo, you're getting a demo of the game. I don't want a demo of the story. I, yeah. I want to see what the gameplay's like. I want to see where the fun lies with it, but at least it was an accurate representation of what the game's going to be. Um, I, I can quite happily play games without stories, uh, another favourite that I've been playing recently is Vostok Inc which oh, really? doesn't doesn't really have a story, it's just there's there's someone tells you what to do and then pops up every now and then with uh, witty comments um, but there's not really a story I suppose there's some cutscenes with characters saying get out of my galaxy and uh, and trying to chase you off but they, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that I'm fine with just action yeah. um it, it is. It, it's. It's not so much that there's a story driving it. It's just that there is a defined start and end. I've. I've always been, or I've previously have been, someone who will hundred percent games. Yeah. Um, I want to find every little thing. I want to know I've got everything. And with a procedurally generated one, that that would never end. Which means, in theory, I should. I should be happy with that. 
um, yeah, I could buy one game and play it for all eternity. Yeah. And never, never experience everything it's got to offer. But I, I, it just doesn't work for me. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I can see, I can see that point. I mean, I think that's the reason that I always think that, um, games like it, uh, 8 bit dungeon, like, I'd really love. But I do, I do like the idea of, of finishing a game. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Which I have a hard time doing anyway, so. <laughs> I need to make a really easy game next. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can you make a casual game just for me so I can. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, one of the episodes in our last, one of the last episodes with um, Kyle and Carrington, we talked about uh, the games that we're most looking forward to. Uh, what games are you currently playing right now, and what games are you most looking forward to in in this uh, 2018? Currently playing right now, I might go back to Celeste and try and do more of the B-sides, but I think I'm possibly happy, I'm possibly happy not doing that. <laughs> um, no, it's just getting so painfully challenging um and i've beaten the main game so I, I might decide i'm content with that i've got uh kamiko lined up to play i've got blossom tales lined up to play and i'm very near the end of vostok inc but I've, again i've not been on that for a, a few weeks now because uh, i managed to get some willpower um, <laughs> but yeah the, i think there's only one game off the top of my head that i'm really looking forward to hopefully this year and that would be metroid prime 4 oh yeah um i've been a massive fan of the metroid series since metroid fusion on uh game Boy advance i missed it or well, i never had a nes and I, I didn't really know about it on super nintendo so my first exposure to it was metroid fusion which i think is possibly my favorite 2d game ever wow um Possibly. Although I've just said that, that Celeste is, haven't I? Technically, that's 2D as well. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, I enjoyed the... I was I was worried that the Metroid Prime games wouldn't be as much fun as the 2D Metroids, because 2D games don't often translate over to 3D particularly well. But uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that series. So, yeah, I'm really, really looking to Metroid, Metroid Prime 4. Probably will get the Spyro remasters as well when they come out. Um, I really enjoyed the Crash Bandicoot remaster. And uh, was there another one? Oh, the Ratchet and Clank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, some of my favorite games from older generations. So uh, I'm quite happy for them to remaster those. Nice. Uh, so you kind of teased in the beginning of this uh, interview. Uh, but what, do you have any other future uh, projects you're working on right now that you can tell us about? Well, well, uh, um, not really sort of new, but sort of new. Where we, we've signed up with uh, Sony and Microsoft now to develop on their systems. Um, I'm 100% certain that I'll be bringing Kid Trip to PS4. Wow, cool. I'd like to hope I'm bringing it to Vita as well, but there's a complication there in that the, the Vita sort of doesn't exist anymore. Uh, <laughs> Um, but I, I don't want to let something like that stop me. Uh, and we're hoping to bring it to Xbox One and Windows as well, but they, wow. they have an approval process. Um, wow. just, it's a little weird. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I had the, the form I had to fill out was uh, interesting. Yeah. I, had, I, had to describe, I had to describe 60 seconds of the game to them explaining what the player's thinking oh, really? and what, what their motivation is. I, I wrote a very sarcastic paragraph and it either just made someone laugh or they don't really care so much what people write. So <laughs> they've, they've let me advance to the la <laughs> later stages. <laughs> so they've currently got a build. I was hoping I'd have heard back from them by now if, they, if they're going to say, yeah, they want to sit on their platform. Um, but it would probably make sense, although I don't know if I've ever discussed this with Mike, that we would also then do the same for Miles and Kilo. Yeah. Uh, get those over on the other platforms as well, which would be it'd be a nice feather in our cap to get a couple of games out on pretty much every current platform. Um, after that, I don't have any firm plans. I've got the possibility of 
working with another mobile developer porting their games over to well initially we've sort of discussed switch um but nothing's set in stone yet and even if it was i probably wouldn't say anything because i'm desperately hoping to uh get nintendo interested and the get them to reveal it on a Nintendo Direct because that would be the sort of publicity I'd really Ooh. like. Yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, nothing to announce but but possibilities. But that it seems to be a sensible thing for me to do because um, I can't produce artwork myself, so I've got to invest money in getting artwork um, produced for me. Yeah. Um, and at the minute, I'm not really sat on any money. I'm spending it all. <laughs> so um <laughs> yeah cruises aren't cheap yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so no for the for the business i think i think the most sensible for me is to try and work on future collaboration projects similar to miles and kilo trip where people have made really good games on on mobile but don't really have access to to the consoles and, and work in partnerships with them to convert them over and uh, get them out so even if this current couple of games doesn't uh, doesn't end up getting agreed and signed I, I think I'll be looking in a similar vein for other people who've, who've got good games on mobile that would like to uh, expand so if anyone cool. who's listening who uh, is in that position get in touch yeah yeah absolutely uh, well then speaking of which how can people get a hold of you well, uh, the website fourhorses.co.uk has a contact form on there, which is a fairly sensible starting point. Um, I'm on Twitter as at four horses games. That's F O U R horses. How else would you spell horses? Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, there's probably other ways, but I can't think of them off the top of my head. Those two are the, probably the best ones. Great. Um, yeah great well thank you so much mick for uh for joining me again and um i'm looking forward to miles and kilo on the switch yeah yeah won't be long now i I will say that's one of the reasons i did get a switch is to play your games i'm not gonna lie (laughs) that is actually one of the reasons yeah i'm really glad they they, it's a great machine everyone should have one i think everyone will soon it's the way it seems to be going (laughs) yeah Uh, it's probably the only only system i'm constantly playing right now but i i saw you know when milos and kilo was uh being announced and how you said it's gonna be on a switch i'm like okay fine i'm gonna get a switch <laughs> good stuff <laughs> it's a good game it's yeah good i'm excited game. it like looks it. good well thanks again mick and uh and we'll keep in touch yeah definitely thanks for having me on again it's oh, always welcome. good you're welcome all right take care everybody thanks for listening <laughs>